Our next guest is Ava Putseva, a congressional candidate for Arizona's first district. Uh, Ava, good evening, thanks for joining us here. Thank you for having me here. Uh, let's get right into it, right? Why are you running for office? We face urgent challenges, immigration, healthcare, climate change, and we can no longer accept timid, hesitant leadership that prioritizes corporate interests. We must put, put people first, and that's why I'm running. And you are primarying Tom O'Halloran. Why does he need to go? Well, he needs to go because he takes money from corporate interests and then he votes in support of those interests. He voted to deregulate banks and weaken the Dodd-Frank Act. He voted to criminalize immigrants by voting for Kate's law. Mm -hmm. He voted to support ICE. And he just recently voted to weaken the Raise the Wage Act and introduce an amendment that would allow Congress in the future to modify the future minimum wage increases. But it's also not just because what he, how he votes, he votes 40% and with Trump, but what he doesn't do, and he doesn't champion the kind of policies that we need. We need universal health care. We need bold climate action. We need a complete immigration overhaul. And those are the issues that he is nowhere to be found on. And let's touch on one of those topics there, because if I have this correct, you immigrated to the US from Slovakia, right? That's correct. And how did that experience inform your stance on immigration reform and what needs to happen? Mm -hmm. So I became an accidental immigrant because my uh, former partner had college loans and uh, he had to pay them off. And I was free, even though I came from a former Eastern European country. But the experience going through the process really highlighted to me just how unjust it is and how immigrants oftentimes are treated, especially when they come from countries like Mexico or Central America, you know, when they don't have sexy um, British or French accents. Mm -hmm. And I really think that what we need to do is we need to have an immigration oversight committee uh, with the majority of indigenous members that regularly reviews immigration policies and recommend changes. We need to normalize the status of undocumented people, including those eligible for DACA, DAPA, and TPS. There is no benefit to uh, people in this country, American citizens, to people who are undocumented, to have people, millions of people living in fear. We have to get rid of ICE, abolish ICE, and return the agencies back to the US Department of uh, Justice. We need to expand the uh, Refugee Act to cover people fleeing climate disasters and also people facing domestic or other violence. We have to also establish an immigrant bill of rights. And these are just few policies that I think are absolutely necessary if we think that we are a, you know, just and a generous society. And Eva, you previously were on city council in Flagstaff, Arizona, right? Can you tell me a little bit about your time there and some of the break down mm -hmm. some of the reforms you were able to enact while in office there? Mm -hmm. So uh, today is the Indigenous Peoples Day, and I was able to initiate and we were able to pass the Indigenous Peoples Day in Flagstaff. Uh, while I was on the city council in my spare time, I ran a local citizen initiative raising Flagstaff's minimum wage to $15 and eventually amending it through um, council process to $15.50. But importantly, we also raised the exploitative subminimum tipped wage to the full minimum wage. And uh, that happened in uh, our city uh, 30 years after any other jurisdiction uh, was able to do it and keep that policy. I also champion and we were able to pass city's first climate action plan. And I champion and we were, we were able to pass city's first paid parental leave policy. What about uh, climate change? Where do you stand on the Green New Deal? So I am a big supporter of the Green New Deal. I really think that the only way 
out of this climate crisis is through heavy investments. Mm -hmm. We cannot just, um, you know, focus on uh, taxing carbon or some uh, small regulative uh, measures. We really have to heavily invest in retooling our economy. And it's only if we can retool our economy, we can also address uh, climate change. Uh, We cannot, on one hand, fight uh, for lifting people out of poverty and at the same time uh, just uh, accepting status quo when it comes to uh, how we generate energy, what kind of transportation system we have, and what kind of building infrastructure we have. We cannot have a functioning economy and people uh, having great lives at the same time not addressing uh, climate change. Absolutely. Uh, where do you stand on impeachment? Where do you stand on the, the actions I guess Congress is taking right now? And do you think it is the right time? Has it taken uh, too long? Is it the wrong time? Where? Tell me where you stand. I think it's uh, taken a little too long, but I'm glad the Congress is uh, moving forward, or at least the House is moving forward. Uh, my opponent, the incumbent, was among the last ones to come on board um, after the speaker uh, announced her support uh, for starting the impeachment proceedings. I think it's um, detrimental to this country's interests to uh, continue with this presidency. I think we should act swiftly and move things through the House and then um, to Senate. What do you say on Medicare for all? I just want to break down some issues now. <laughs> uh, absolutely, and you know, I grew up in a country where nobody worried about medical bills ruining their financial future, and I believe that every American deserves uh, health care. Health care should be a privilege. Uh, I mean, should be a right <laughs> and not privilege. Uh, we need, uh, and I really think that the proposal that's on the table um, as Medicare for All is a great proposal. Uh, I really like the part that says that you know small businesses, um, their payroll would be uh, exempt to the tune of the first two million dollars. Uh, I think the fact that today uh, people can lose their health coverage if they change jobs, if they get divorced, if they um, reach age 26. Um, I think that should not happen in a country uh, where everybody um, appreciates freedom. And how free are we uh, if we have to worry about medical bills? So Medicare for all absolutely is the right uh, pathway to go. And uh, uh, we need to get uh, the money making uh, corporations out of the system. Let's talk abortion rights now. Where do you stand on protecting uh, reproductive rights? Uh, So I'm a woman and I think Mm -hmm. I cannot even imagine uh, another woman uh, opposing uh, uh, fully fully bodily autonomy. Right. Uh, To me, it's very basic. I cannot believe that in 2019, we are still talking about this. Uh, you know, my grandmother died from a botched abortion, and it was in 1946 wow. in a post-war Europe. And we are heading exactly where people used to be in countries without an existing uh, healthcare infrastructure. Um, you know, in uh, the middle of the last century. Um, you know, I am a strong supporter. I will speak publicly and openly. Uh, We should not be afraid of the word abortion. Uh, We should not be afraid of the word contraception. And uh, we should really stand up for all women and actually all people, because it's not just uh, women that are affected by um, these draconian policies that we've seen uh, coming to life uh, in the last few years. And we just have like one more minute, but I feel like we went down a really long list of issues, but I just wanted to give you the opportunity to tell our viewers if there's anything else that's important to you that you'd like them to know. So I think one of the greatest challenges in in this country is money in politics. And this is why we chose to run a campaign where we, uh, it is a completely grassroots campaign. We don't accept any money from uh, corporate interests or from lobbyists. And this is very scary to, Uh, the political establishment, 
and to everybody around us. And so if you think that we need more progressives in the house and you would like to support our campaign, you can do so by going to evaforcongress.com. Um, you know, I think this is how change happens is we, if we elect people that cannot be bought by corporate interests. And that's what we are doing here. Eva, thank you so much for being here with us this evening. I really appreciate it. Thank you for having me. Thanks for watching this free clip of the Young Turks. Don't forget to become a TYT member today. For more exclusive content, join now at tyt.com slash join.